Okay, so yes, I like randomly picking books out of this box. It's my channel. Thank you again, Sasami Chan. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm wondering if we hit your second book yet. And could this one that I can't get my fingers on be it? Oh, Star Wars, the Wookiee storybook. Okay. Let's hope it's nothing like that Star Wars TV special. You mean the Christmas special? Yes. And now thanks to this I have, um, what do you get a Wookiee for Christmas when he already has a comb stuck in my head? Wow. It's a Christmas song. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We found the other Star Wars books, Asami-chan. Star Wars, the Wookiee storybook. This is a very well-loved book from Random House. Nice. Tape all over the cover. Though by the cover, I'm suddenly reminded of the Star Wars Christmas special, which I have not seen in its entirety. <laughs> all right. Illustrated by Patricia Wayne. Hopefully they speak English in this book. It would be a little awkward otherwise. Oh, look, we have a cast page. Chewbacca, Chewie, co-pilot for Han Solo, Lumpa Rump, Lumpy, son of Chewbacca and Maltabuck, Maltabuck, Mala, wife of Chewbacca, and Titrick, Itchy, grandfather of La Rumpa Wump. Han Solo, captain of the starship Millennium Falcon. All nicely rendered. The Wookiees look very fuzzy. Past the trillions of stars and meteors that fill the universe, the planet Kashyyyk yeah, these are not meant to be pronounceable. Shown like a giant blue globe. Kashik was the dense jungle home of the Wookiees. The trees on Kashik grew so close together that it was possible to walk on the tops of them. It was there, on the tops of the trees, that the Wookiees built their homes. And just so you know the spelling I'm working with, K-A-S-H-Y-Y-Y-K. -Y 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 wow. Also, nicely illustrated. There's a nice bird. There's the trees. The trees have nice texture. I believe Chewbacca and his son are in the shot in the background there. And look at all the wood all over the place. Mm -hmm. As in the buildings. Yes, the very ornate tree houses. It was an exciting day for the Wookiees. Chewbacca was returning home. He had been away on a three-year mission with Han Solo. Even more important... It was Chewie's 200th birthday, his bicentennial. Mella was planning a surprise party for Chewbacca. She had spent days cooking, but she wasn't able to make Chewbacca's favorite dessert, wasaka berry pudding. Only Chewbacca was brave and skillful enough to gather the wasaka berries, because the berries rarely grew anywhere but in the dark, swampy lower levels of the jungle. Lumpy wanted to go down into the jungle to hunt for the berries, but Mala wouldn't let him. She said it was much too dangerous. So Lumpy was very sad. And you can see him sitting there on a stool. Very sad. Mm-hmm. Just trying to figure out what that was. Probably a window. I, I'm thinking that, but it's like in the bottom corner of the, pit of the um, building. Itchy knew how to cheer up his unhappy grandson. He would tell him a story. He decided to tell Lumpy how Chewbacca became a hero and the most famous Wookiee of all time. Lighting his pipe and puffing on it until it glowed brightly, Itchy began his story. So this is a prequel to this Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, the Wookiees came to Kashyyyk from another planet, said Itchy. They quickly saw that the jungle planet was made up of different layers. The top layers were as beautiful as they are now. But, oh, the lower layers. They were always dangerous even as they are now. Our ancestors named the lower layers the Netherworld. Down there, at the bottoms of the trees, live many strange, ugly creatures in a horrible, oozing swamp. That doesn't look like a horrible, oozing swamp, and those don't look like horrible creatures. Yeah, they look very beautiful, very bright. There's a claw there for them. I don't know what. I'm guessing maybe another alligator-like creature? Yeah, as it's a little too far away to belong to this horned creature that's peeking out here. And it's not the same color as this creature wrapped around the same limb as the paw. A little kind of dragon snake thing. 
It's a very colorful bird. Mm-hmm. It's something that kind of looks like a possum. And a very cat-like monkey. Hmm. The Wookiees lived peacefully on the treetops for hundreds of years, Itchy told Lumpy. But one dark day, strangers invaded our happy planet. The strangers were slave traders. They captured your father and many other Wookiees and took them in chains to their own planet far away. Han Solo was visiting that foreign planet, Itchy continued, when the slave traders arrived with our people. Han hated the slave traders, and he hated seeing the Wookiees beaten and starved. So he decided to try to set them free. Yeah, because that sounds just like Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, I know. Solo attacked the slave traders, and the Wookiees joined in the fight. And your father, Itchy told Lumpy, saved Han Solo from being choked to death by a huge slave trader. Finally, all the slave traders were beaten. The Wookiees were saved from a life of slavery. Hmm, that's very consistent and very nice so far. And look at the detail on the Millennium Falcon on the next page. Woof. Mm -hmm. And there's these lizard-like creatures that I assume are the aliens. Yes, the alien slave traders. Han chose Chewbacca to be his official protector. Chewie would be Han Solo's co-pilot on all his missions. What a great honor for your father, said Itchy, and for all Wookiees. But these missions have kept Chewie away from Kashyyyk for long periods of time. You must know he'd like to stay home more with you and your mother, said Itchy. When he returns this time, he will be honored with a very special kind of party. It will be a bicentennial celebration, just like the ones they have on planets far, far away. Then he told Lumpy about one celebration that had a parade of great tall sailing ships on the sea and fireworks in the sky. Lumpy loved the story. He was so proud of his father. He wanted to be a hero just like him. Suddenly, he had an idea. The wasaka berries. He was sure he could find wasaka berries for the party. And he would be a hero. Lumpy ran upstairs to get a bucket from his toy chest. He didn't want Mala to worry. So he sneaked out of the house. As he walked along, humming, Lumpy imagined that his berry hunt was an adventure on another planet. He made believe he was hunting the slave traders of long ago. Rap! Take that! Lumpy said as he slashed at make-believe enemies. I'm just glad they're speaking in English because I would hate to just see all over the page. Yeah. I mean, that's what they did in the Christmas special. Lumpy was not supposed to go more than 200 meters away from his house. And he was supposed to stay in the upper levels of bushes and trees. But he couldn't find any berries near the house, so he kept going further and further away. He would have to go into the lower levels of the jungle to find the berries. He was frightened, but he did want to be a hero. Very carefully, he started to climb down, down, down. Yeah, real heroes don't do things because they want to be a hero so much. It tends to be they do good things and other people call them heroes. And it's a berry. It's a berry to make a dessert, not a berry needed for a medicine. Mm -hmm. The trees grew thinner. Here and there, creepy things scurried behind clumps of shaggy bushes. There must be some berries around here someplace, Lumpy thought. Though it looks like all the Possible berry bushes nearby in this particular shot are stripped clean. Well, those look more like ferns than berry bushes, but... Hmm. What do I know of the agriculture on another world? Hmm. Then, Lumpy missed a step. Suddenly, he was falling down into the terrible swamp of the nether world. Okay. For an instant there, it looks like he was, like, sw swinging from a vine back over here. Yeah, it looks like he's gripping part of the tree. I'm guessing that might be the branch he was carrying in the other page. So now, whoops, flip, 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 whoa! Yeah, so two-page spread of him falling out of a single tree. Well, the trees have to be large, you know, considering they hold the homes of the Wookiees. Remember, this is a children's book, so no one dies. They just get hurt really bad. They also have a long time to wave goodbye. <laughs> What a splash Lumpy made when he landed. A giant shiver went through his furry body when he saw where he was. He gave a loud wookie cry for help. T-R-V-V-V-P. <laughs> Turrivip. Then he realized no one could hear him. Poor Lumpy. 
The water was cold and slimy. The smell was horrible. And worst of all, scary-looking creatures began popping their heads up all around Lumpy. Well, I can definitely see the scary-looking creatures. Though that's mostly a butt right there for that one. The face is right there, but poor Lumpy, he's just a tasty little morsel. Meanwhile, back at the house, Mala couldn't find Lumpy. She looked everywhere. She called and called, but there was no answer. She began to worry. Mala went outside and circled the house, calling for Lumpy, but he wasn't there either. What if he was in trouble? What if he had fallen into the swamp? If only Chewy was home. Chewy! He was the answer. She would think a message to him. She couldn't send a message to Lumpy because he was too young. Only adult Wookiees have the power to send each other thought waves. Okay. This was never brought up in the canon. That I recall at all. Not, not even the um, older movies canon where we had an entire planet full of Wookiees. So that was mostly fighting, so. Mala closed her eyes and thought hard about Chewbacca. She pictured him on the spaceship with Han Solo. Then she sent out especially powerful thought waves to tell Chewie that Lumpy was in danger, that he might even be lost in the swamp. Mala kept her eyes shut tight and concentrated and concentrated. And wouldn't it be easier to ask help of a Wookiee that's already on the planet? Yes. Also, I'm pretty sure you have some type of like interstellar communication, phone, something. Aboard the spaceship, everything was in order. The nearer the craft got to Keshek, the happier Chewie became. Han was happy too. He smiled every time he looked over at his partner. Han was going to stay on Kashik for Chewie's bicentennial. He knew about the surprise party, and he was looking forward to it. He was also looking forward to seeing Lumpy, who loved to hear the stories Han had to tell. <laughs> Suddenly, Chewie let out a gigantic roar and jumped up from his seat. Han was startled. Chewie seemed to be in pain, but nothing had happened. No explosives had hit the ship. No enemy craft was on the tracking screen. What is it, Chewie? Han asked with concern. Are you sick? Chewie told Han about the thought wave he had just received from Mala. Han was horrified. The swamp, he cried. Chewie, we must act fast. Oh, Han does understand Chewie. Mm-hmm. That's not a problem. It's just the whole thought wave. Oh. Telepathic thingy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, choosing to call for help off planet instead of. Yeah, there's plenty of young, healthy Wookiees. Who, as adults, you should be able to send thought waves to. Yeah. At once, Han activated the ship's super sensitive tracking camera. Han twisted the dials, adjusted the controls, and focused the sights until a picture formed on the large screen. There they were, the topmost trees of Kashik. Han adjusted the controls again until the nether world finally came into view. He twisted and turned the knobs, aiming the camera, looking for a spot where the trees were thin. Chewie covered his eyes with his huge furry paws. He couldn't watch. His little son might be in the oozy waters of the swamps, facing the creatures of the nether world. And that's just where Lumpy was, lost in the nether world. If you're wondering, it's N-O-T-H-E-R, other with an N in front of it. Hmm. He climbed out of the water and walked along the slippery, twisted roots of the swamp trees. He tried to think about wasaka berries and ignore the strange, frightening swamp creatures. He thought about his father. Chewbacca would never give up, and neither would Lumpy. Nice that he managed to retain the bucket after the fall. Yeah. And there's all the strange creatures, and there's a really fuzzy one in the background with just eyes. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me of that one creature from Looney Tunes. A little bit. It wasn't long before the swamp creatures decided to investigate Lumpy. They started to creep closer and closer. Suddenly, a terrible round ball of a monster was right behind Lumpy. He saw it and forgot all about Wakasa berries. He had to get away. Just as the dreadful creature lunged at him, Lumpy spotted a hollow log. He dived headfirst into it. The monster followed. Crash! It hit the side of the log and sank slowly into the murky swamp. Lumpy sat shaking in the bottom of the log. He was safe, but only for a little while. He didn't see the strange round creature. Mm -hmm. And you can see Lumpy going head first into that log. Ugh, reminds me of those toys you used to get that had just like a little face sticking out of it. And then they were all um, strong pieces of elastic, elasticized plastic. Mm -hmm. You could just yank on it and it would bounce. Mm -hmm. 
Hovering in their spaceship high above Kashik, Han Solo and Chewie had worked out a plan. Chewie would fly one of their explorer craft down into the netherworld. The craft was small enough so Chewie could maneuver it under the trees and through the bushes. Ready, Chewie? Han called. Chewie answered with a nod and a loud wookie yell. Then off you go. Good luck. I'll be waiting with Mala. Han punched the catapult button and Chewie's miniature rocket zoomed off into space. Yeah, this is all stuff I guess they didn't need to bring up in the movies. Makes sense that the Millennium Falcon would have a smaller craft on board. Well, for emergency evacuations, if nothing else. In only one minute, Chewbacca was in the atmosphere of Kashyyyk. Slowing down to planetary speed, Chewie zigged and zagged through the maze of plant life until he was almost down to the level of the netherworld. The only animal forms he saw were sinister, ugly creatures. Nowhere did he see the familiar furry form he was looking for. Hmm. There's like a Nessie in the background. There's another strange tiger claw climbing thing. And what looks to be, I'm not quite sure, but whatever that is. Some sort of lizard fish type thing. In the shelter of his hollow log, Lumpy heard a whirring, echoing sound. His heart beat faster. Could it be? He poked his head out. It was an explorer craft. He climbed out of the log and waved frantically. The craft tipped its wings. Inside was Chewbacca. He had spotted his son. Lumpy would be saved. Chewbacca slowed the explorer craft and landed near Lumpy in the oozing swamp. He opened the hatch and Lumpy crawled in. Then Chewbacca fired the rockets and the ship zoomed up out of the swamp. Nice. That's pretty cool, though I'm not quite sure how this particular shot of Chewbacca in the exploratory ship would work because it's kind of not only is the vehicle on its side it's also tilted slightly down. Ooh, here come the waterworks. Chewie hugged Lumpy but then he looked at him sternly. Lumpy knew why. He tried to explain to his father that he just wanted to get some berries as a very special treat. Then Lumpy started to cry. I wanted you to be proud of me he said. But I didn't get the wasaka berries. I'll never be a hero like you. And there's poor Lumpy sitting in the seat with a seatbelt on, crying. Chewbacca was quiet for a minute. Then he spoke gently to Lumpy. Lumpy, you are a hero, he said. Even when you were afraid, you kept trying. That is what makes a hero. It also covers the foolhardy, but hey. <laughs> Lumpy beamed as the small craft turned and landed on top of the trees in front of their house. Mala was so happy to see Lumpy and Chewbacca that she forgot to scold Lumpy for wandering away. And besides, Lumpy couldn't have heard her anyway. Hundreds of Wookiees were shouting, Surprise! Surprise! Chewbacca couldn't believe it. He'd been so excited about coming home, he had forgotten it was his 200th birthday. What a party. Music, dancing, games, and of course, fireworks. The banquet tables were piled high with the fruits and the leafy wild vegetables that grew on Kashyyyk. Steaming casseroles were surrounded by sizzling roasts and Mala's secret souffles. Look at all those Wookiees. Also the previous page with Chewbacca saying hello to his family and you can already see some stuff from the party in the background there and then you have this full page spread over here with all those Wookiees. Some of them were dancing. And several musicians, and some birds, and a cat-like animal, and Hans over at the buffet. A couple more kid Wookiees hanging around. Fair number of kids. And one of them has a balloon. Chewie put his arm around Mala. This is a wonderful party, he told them. I am home, Mala is here, and Lumpy and Itchy and Han and all the Wookiees. Nothing is missing, right Lumpy? Lumpy nodded and smiled. Only the wasaka berries, he said, as everyone laughed. Because that's how you end a kid's show. With everyone laughing. Ah, 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 and then you freeze frame, and it's horrifying. Yes. Not as bad as the live action shows where they freeze frame at the end, and you're like, hmm. So, yeah, that was fun. I wouldn't mind seeing more of these animals. I really, I like their designs. You know, the neat creatures that were down in the swamp area. That's the most scary one to me right here, this yeah. green villa. Yeah, that looks like a combination of ape and hippo. No, that explains why it looks so big to me, but it also looks like it's up in the tree, so... Oh, we only see that part of it. It could be a gigantic snake. Yeah. This is much better than the Christmas special. 
It doesn't even really, really lead into it. It just has the same Wookiees that were actually in it. Yeah, and it's just a very colorful swamp, too. It's not that dark or dreary. No, it's very bright, and it doesn't really match the horrible oozing swamp. I mean, if you're not suited to being in a swamp, then yes, they're not great, but it didn't exactly look horrendous. Nope. Well, and that wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. But, oh, MacGuffin, I need Chewbacca. I need my husband. Also, ow, I need my husband. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, thought waves. Because heaven forbid we have communicators. Yeah, I mean, it's Star Wars. They have communicators. They have radios. And I'm pretty sure these Wookiees would have the same thing. So, and apparently Chewbacca was close enough that they probably could have easily called them from a... Standard comm unit. Also, how do you communicate with other Wookiees on the planet? Because I still vote that you go for someone who's closer when you need help. Anyways, Star Wars, the Wookiee storybook, illustrated by Patricia Wayne. Who did an excellent job. Yes, there's a lot of texture in here to have to draw. Because you have the fur on all the Wookiees, the fur on the animals, the detail on the trees. That was that took a while. And a lot of the illustrations actually, especially the close-up ones, looked like um, Chewbacca and his family. The illustrations themselves of the characters that we have seen elsewhere are very spot on canon wise. Can't really say for the animals because I don't remember any of them. Oh, and look, they have a bucket full of the berries on the back cover. How nice. Also, who keeps a bucket in their toy box? Well, maybe you use the bucket to help carry toys around and stuff. Because I had bu plastic buckets in my toy box. I did too, but they were for building a sandcastle. But if you're sta required to stay in the upper layers, you're not going to find this sand to make a sandcastle. Oh well. So, we do have other Star Wars books, which means, if Lux did his job, we have a Star Wars book playlist. Um, probably. If not, there's one now. <laughs> and we do have other books that are licensed. So, there's the licensed playlist. Basically, there's playlists by every probable theme, including the gigantic playlist of, this is the order we read the books in. Just in case this is your first book. Go back to the beginning of that playlist and then listen till you get to this book. It's going to be a well. Enjoy! <laughs> uh, not sure if this one would still be in print, but we'll try to get you a link. If it's still in print, because copyright 1979. Wow. Yeah, might just be a, a link to a used copy. And that will probably be Amazon. Also, Ebates, because I can. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room. And while I'm at it, Ember's Emporium of Everything or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. <laughs> Thanks again for listening.